my body is a window. Which is to say, if you lift me up, I will let in a thousand fragrant blooms, spring air to hold you. But here's the thing about trauma. It builds bars around being. So used to my body, pressed up against glass, voices muffled, breath fogging up pain. I have become proficient in writing the word help backwards. In a TV show where people dress up as drag queens, contestants are asked to name their inner saboteur. Ladies and gentle them, please welcome to the stage, Sid. It is short for insidious. Sid says, have you ever thought about a very brief career and tying knots? Sid says, what would happen if we laid down and just never got up? Sid says, if you wanna go, let's go. Sid is not my friend. Defenestration is the act of throwing a body through a window. But how can I throw this voice outside myself? Remember, trauma builds bars around being. The writer Anna Borges has called this condition chronic passive suicidal ideation. I call it up at least five times a week involuntarily. On the weekend we do each other's nails. As I ring for the pizza it is planning an escape route. I so want to escape this. So I go to therapy. I do the work. I write lists and on all of them your name appears twice. I head home realizing that I may be a car doing 40 something down the freeway of life tires bolding, odometer and needing occasional tapping, but my radio heart can still sing and when I wind the windows down, my palms catch wind and surely this is enough reason to keep going. I get home, fill bucket with soap and water, take down all the bars, squeegee clean each sheet of pain, go inside, Turn on all the lights, so I am bright and shiny, because my body is a window, and now, now you can see me. My name is Scott Patrick Mitchell. Um, I live and write on the land of the Wajak Noongar Nation. And I pay my respect to elders past, present, and acknowledge that this is, was, and always will be Aboriginal land. I'm going to be talking today about suicidal ideation. So, big content warning for that experience. Um, I have lived with suicidal ideation since the age of 14. And on October the 10th, 2021, I will turn 44. So that's 30 years that I've lived with what I can only describe as the worst housemate in the entire world, living here rent free. Um, I've been really lucky with the therapy that I've had and the therapists that I've had. Um, and they've all recognized that for me, writing poetry has been a really strong way for me to understand, process, and um, examine the underlying symbols that are all part of my lived mental health experience of suicidal ideation. So through writing poetry, you never know how far it's going to go out into the world. I mean, I don't know who's watching this now, I don't know who's watched my poem, but I'm hoping, hoping that there are some of you out there who have seen it, who needed to hear it and found power in it. Um, and that's the beauty of writing poetry in response to a mental health, uh, in, in response to a lived mental health experience, is that it can connect with people uh, in a way that I guess is akin to magic. It kind of, it gets to the symbols, it gets to the energy, it gets to the flow of the experience and people connect to that. Um, so I'm always honored when people reach out and it happens a lot. 
um, like a lot, <laughs> which is one of the joys for writing is that it does happen and people respond with um, such generous empathy and that is reason enough to keep going writing and and, and the rest. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's really important to write about our experiences in poetry. It can be really difficult with something like suicidal ideation to talk about it in a public sphere. Um, people don't understand it. Um, it can get flagged on social media. So there are all these barriers um, that exist around talking about it. There's all this stigma barriers. But when you put it into a poem, the poem cuts through all of that and it just reaches the people that it needs to reach. Um, and I hope that my poem has reached someone and held them and made them feel seen. Um, that, that's the only thing I can really hope for. <laughs> um, yeah, so please write about your experiences. Of course, put content warnings at the beginning if it's really difficult, because then that sets up people's, you know, their expectations and, and their sense of self-care. But write about your lived experiences because the energy of it, the, the, the compassion that you show yourself will reach somebody else and hold them and make them feel seen. Um, thanks for your time. I'm going to go because this is getting emotional. <laughs> Be safe. Write. And yeah, embrace your voice. Thank you.